Speaker, today, as I noted yesterday, the Senate will have a rare opportunity. For those who supported the health spending bill in the past, it's an opportunity to revisit your first vote, to listen to those who have desperately been trying to get your attention, to say, yes, maybe my vote for this bill was a mistake, maybe we can do better, to listen to the small business owners who've been contacting our offices every single day and telling us all the ways this bill keeps them from creating the jobs that we need, to show that you've actually noticed that most Americans don't want this bill, to show that you're aware more people want it repealed than don't, to show that you've noticed the town halls in your states, to show that you've noticed the opposition to this bill continues to grow, to show that you've noticed the federal court rulings that said this bill is unconstitutional at its core. It's not every day that you get a second chance on a big decision after you know all the facts. This is that second chance. And for all of us who oppose the health bill, today we reaffirm our commitment to work a little harder to get it right. We can't afford to get it wrong, but let's not anyone hide behind the preposterous talking point that repealing this bill would add to the deficit. I mean, only in Washington would somebody claim that spending trillions of dollars on a brand new government entitlement and a massive bureaucracy to go along with it will save money. So I urge all my colleagues to move beyond party affiliation, to look at the facts alone. If everyone in this chamber did that, we'd repeal this bill right now. And then we'd begin the work of achieving our common goal of delivering health care at a higher quality for lower costs. We'd put in place the common sense report reforms people actually want. Now, we also expect a vote later today that would clear away one of the many impediments to job creation that was layered into this bill. It turns out Senator Johans did such an outstanding job of raising awareness about the 1099 requirement that our friends on the other side have basically co-opted the idea are now claiming it as their own. Well, actually, that, that's fine with us. It's not a bad precedent, actually. Uh, we've got a lot of other good ideas that we'd be happy uh, to share. Not replacing one 2,700-page bill with another, but passing common-sense reforms that people actually want. The case against this bill is more compelling every day. Everything we learn tells us it was a bad idea, that it should be repealed and replaced. The courts say so. The American people say so. Job creators say so. It's time for those who pass this bill to show that they've noticed. Let's take this opportunity. Madam President, I yield the floor. Madam President.